Hello watchers and welcome to a new video in the series Audient Interfaces Explained Accessibly. Today we are finally going to answer the question, how can I edit my Audient Interface configuration without ever touching the software? And because I want to keep those videos as short and precise as possible, we will jump right into it after the intro. <music> Okay guys, I'm on my desktop now and I will explain this, the basics that you will need every time you're configuring something on your own interface once. And in every other video, I will link to this video so that you can get the basics ready. The thing that you need to do every time you're changing something within the configuration of your own interface is you need to end the audient driver process before editing the XML file. I am telling you this from the Windows perspective, which means that I can demonstrate it to you real quick. There are two ways to actually do this. One way is via task manager, like press control, shift, escape, open the task manager, find the process that is called id.exe and to end this process by pressing Alt P and space on that. The other option would be to press Windows R, as I can demonstrate here. And what you type is task kill. T -S -A -S -K -K -I -L -L space. space slash F space slash I M space I D dot E X E. And then you press enter. Unknown. And that will have the process killed. That's the thing you need to do first, because as long as the application is running, it won't be reloading your settings that you've changed. The next thing that you need to do is you need to find your state.xml file, which contains all the configuration that you need to change. According to the Audient website, the steps required to take in order to find the state.xml file on a Mac are as follows. Hold down the Alt key, open the Go menu, in there, navigate to Library, Application, Support, Audient, and in there should be an ID folder. The folder might also be called Evo instead of ID if you're running an Evo instead of an ID Mark II or Mark I interface. Under Windows, however, I can demonstrate the behavior. So what I'd recommend you to do in order to find the file that you need to edit is press Windows plus R to open the execution window again. In there, you type percent, percent selection removed. app data, a -T -T -D -A -T -A. percent, and percent. press end on that. Text. C. Users only app data roaming. That will open your app data folder, which is kind of huge. In there, you want to find a folder called Audient by just typing AUD. You will find a folder called Audient and present on that. ID not selected one of five. There's a folder ID, cause I've got an ID interface, so that's where I want to go. I press space, space on selected. that and press enter. State.xml not selected one of one. So I've got the stated XML here, and that's exactly the file that we need to configure right now. So I open that file in a editor of my choice. State.xml notepad 2. Which is notepad 2. And that's the moment where we are going to work with an XML file format. You don't necessarily need to know how XML works because I will guide you through the process of editing the internals. And as the video title already says, the plan for today is to get you up and running and control where your mix is going to. While the configuration for the ID interfaces will probably look quite similar, the configuration for the Evo interfaces might look very different. That means that my guide for my IDE 14 Mark II will probably not apply to your Evo interface. If that is the case, then let me know in the comment section below this video and I will see if I can find a solution to your problem. I will also link a text file in the description below this video, which contains a lot of useful information about changing the configuration file of an Evo interface. Make sure to check this one out as well. We are checking out how we can configure which of our output pairs, in my case, I've got three of them. I've got main speaker output, 
I've got alternative speaker output, and I've got headphones output. So I have basically three stereo outputs. Which of our mixes that we have within our interface goes to which output? I'd recommend you to skip to the end of the file first, because the settings that we are searching are actually more to the bottom of the file instead to the top. So we will go to the end of the file, Flag. which is a blank line. So from the end of the file, we will scroll up by pressing the up arrow until I say stop. Let's slash presets greater. Let's slash preset greater. Let's slash gate greater. Let's slash windows greater. Let's slash window greater. Let's state window pose exit. Let's window eight equals one. Let's slash window greater. Window width equals fourteen. Input controls visibly. Let's state analog inputs. Let's window eight equals zero. Let's window less important greater. to us, especially not important to us because it's basically controlling the GUI settings and the window settings and everything. Let's gate type equals one. Let's slash device greater. So we will skip that. Let's slash routing greater. But we're almost there. Let's loop back type equals three indexing. Let's routing greater. Let's slash system greater. Let's route it equals four and let's route it equals let's route it equals let's system we optical input mode equals stiff preferred clock equals internal greater. We will go to this line. Let's let's system optical input mode equals stiff preferred clock equals internal greater. So what does this line say? It says, and that's XML notation. All the lines or most of the lines will start with a less sign. The line will read a less sign system space optical dash input dash mode equals SPDIF in quotes space preferred dash clock equals internal in quotes greater that's not important to us but the next line will be on the next lines we almost look identical in my case there are three of them let's route in it equals zero index equals zero mode equals stereo source equals main speaker slash greater less routing space id equals zero in quotes space index equals zero in quotes space mode equals stereo in quotes space source equals main dash speakers in quotes slash greater so what does this do exactly the less routing basically tells the audience interface that it's a routing entry and it describes which internal mix goes where. The ID zero says that we're basically controlling the first mix here and which mix is mapped to which ID is basically different from interface to interface or from interface series to interface series. So each Evo 8 has the same configuration, each Evo 4 has the same configuration and so on. So the ID zero routing is basically the output one plus two on the back. The index equals zero is basically doing some similar thing, and we usually don't have to mess with that. The mode setting, however, is controlling if we are having a stereo or mono output. You can replace the text within the quotes, which is stereo in my case, with mono, which is M-O-N-O, -O, to have a mix down of your selected mix sent to this output. The most important information, however, is the string within the quotes behind the source equals text. In my case, there's main dash speakers written here, which is spelled M-A-I-N dash S-P-E-A K-E-R-S. And in the case of the Audient ID40 Mark II, main dish speakers relates to the main mix that you have configured within your software or within this XML file. The other options that you have with an ID14 Mark II are Alt dash speakers, which is A-L-T dash S-P-E-A-K-E-R-S, which is the alternative mix that you can configure within this software and file. QA and QB, which are written C-U-E-A or C-U-E-B, which describe the alternative mixes that you have, like submixes that you can configure for various purposes. And the fifth option is DAW through, or as it is called in this file, direct, D-I-R-E. CT, which describes the DAW through functionality of the interface, DAW as in digital audio workstation. This mix basically routes all the three pairs of stereo DAW through channels, 
which the interface makes available to your operating system directly back into this output without pre-processing it, without volume control possibilities. So you basically get a warning if you do that with the software because it can be really loud because the only volume control is left to your DAW directly. You don't have any volume control within the interface. This option usually gives the best latency of all of them, but you have just very few control. Keep in mind, however, that those strings are just valid for the ID14 Mark II and probably all models with more features like the ID22 and the ID44. On the Evo interfaces, for example, the mixes will probably have different names and thus the strings will be different. The smaller interfaces, like the ID4, for example, has less features and thus main speakers and odd speakers might still be the same. But as far as I know, the ID4 Mark II does not have the QA and QB mixes, so those won't be possible here. So these might be the options that we have here. And my first routing, which is output one and two in the back, is mapped to my main mix and my interface. You can replace the string with whichever string that I described earlier. And it would basically route this mix to this output. If you don't want to have the main output, for example, mapped to your one and two output on the back, then replace main dash speakers here with QA, for example, and you will instead route your QA mix to this output. The line below will look really, really similar. It basically reads less routing ID equals two, index equals one, mode equals stereo, and source equals QA. Why am I doing that? Yeah, basically the index and the ID just tells audience that we are talking about the second outputs on the back here. So we are talking about the alternative outputs and that we are talking about a stereo pair again, and that the source this time is the QA mix. So I'm basically sending my QA mix, which is the mix that goes back into my loopback through the alternative outputs three and four at the back of my interface. The third line, which is basically controlling the last pair of outputs, which is the headphone outputs, looks like this. Less route init equals four index equals two mode equals stereo source equals main speaker slash greater. Less routing ID equals four index equals two mode equals stereo source equals main dash speakers slash greater. It's basically the same as the first line, except that ID and index are different because we are not controlling the output one and two at the back here, but the headphone outputs on the front instead. Everything else is exactly the same. And why is that? Because I'm basically routing my main mix through the headphones as well, so that I can decide if I want to go for the outputs one and two in the back or my headphones in the front, and you will basically be able to listen to the same mix. So let's conclude here. If you want to control which mix goes where, then everything you basically have to change is the text within the quotes behind the source equals text within those three lines. The amount of lines is directly related to the amount of pairs of stereo outputs that your device has. So if you, for example, have an ID22 sitting in front of you, then you will probably have a lot more routing output lines in here. Okay, now, so I changed my configuration file, but how am I supposed to let the interface know that I changed something? And the answer here is quite simple. So if you're looking back to the beginning of the video, then we covered that you had to kill the process, the audient driver process, id.exe. And all we need to do now is actually do the opposite. We need to launch this process again, because whenever this process starts, it's going to take the currently existing state.xml file and apply this to the interface. So first things first, we need to save the file that we probably edited by now. So we will press Control S to do so, at least on our windows. We will close it down, order four. And we will press Windows key on a windows at least. Start window, search window, felt such an edit plan. And we have the search feed under Windows 10 and 11. And I will type audience in there, which is AU, AU. 
D I E N T, and the application is called Audient App Launcher under Windows, and we will just hit enter on that. We won't get any feedback because the app is basically launching in the background, but the id.exe process has started again now. It took our XML file and applied it to the interface, so the changes should have been applied immediately. The final question that comes to mind now is, okay, so now I know how to route my mixes to my inputs, but how can I actually send my inputs to my mixes so that it can actually hear something on my outputs? And although this question is really logical and would definitely be the next step to cover, this question will be answered in the next video of the series, which will cover how you can actually send your inputs that are connected to your interface to your different mixes. And since you already know how you can actually route those mixes to your outputs, this will make sure that you actually can control the input and output metrics of your interface. You might also want to know how to actually configure your specific audience interface, like an EVO 4 or an EVO 8 or one the other ID interfaces, like the ID 4 or the ID 22, to do the same thing that I just did with my ID 14 Mark II. And although I don't have one of those interfaces yet, I will try my best to find the answer to your specific routing questions and either create a different video on that topic or answer your questions in the comment section below this video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date and leave a like if you like what you've just heard. Until next time, bye bye.